Hi, I'm Laura Nelkin. I'm a knitwear designer. I live in upstate New York in the Finger Lakes region, and I am excited to talk to you about knitting with unspun yarn. Have you ever knit with unspun yarn before? I first knit with unspun yarn when I went to Iceland a few years back and I got this skein, um, not really a skein, it's a wheel of Plutolope at the grocery store. And I knit with it and I learned kind of the tips and tricks of working with unspun yarn, but the finished fabric was a little bit too toothy for my skin. I'm a little bit sensitive when it comes to really wooly wools. So I kind of put it away and never designed with it. And then this spring, a friend of mine gifted me a wheel of manchalope. And manchalope is an unspun yarn from Spain that creates a fabric that is incredibly soft and light. Manchalope is an unspun yarn made with manchega wool. Manchega wool comes from the Manchega sheep, which is from the La Mancha Plateau in Spain. These are the same sheep that provide the milk that make Manchego cheese, which is a cool little side fun fact. Most unspun yarns that you'll run into come in a wheel that looks like this. This can also be called a cake or it can be called a plate. You will see on this wheel that there is sliver coming off the wheel. Sometimes these wheels are wound with just one strand of sliver. The manchalope is wound with two strands of sliver coming off the wheel. When I knit the patterns that I designed with the manchalope, I hold those two strands of sliver together. So the trick for working with manchalope is to be incredibly gentle as you are knitting with it. If you go to tug it, it will break and I will show you how that happens in just a few minutes. So you wanna be very, very gentle as you're knitting with it. And I find that it's easier to wind a bit off of my wheel before I go to knit instead of pulling it off the wheel as I am working with it. So I'll take my wheel and I'll put it like in a pie plate or a basket or a knitting bag that's very, very loose, and then just kind of release some of the sliver as I'm working so that I'm never yanking it. I didn't find, I actually brought this project with me when I went to Ireland in September, and I didn't find it easy to work with from my knitting bag. So I would work with it in my hotel room at night or somewhere where I could just have it laying next to me instead of trying to like yank it out of a bag all the time. So that is the first thing that will help you have success when you're knitting with this yarn. Some people like to take their wheel and wind their sliver into a ball before they begin knitting with it. I believe with some unspun yarns, this can add just like a little bit of a spin or a twist to the yarn and give it a little bit more tensile strength. So if you're getting frustrated by your sliver breaking, that is something that you could do. I did not do that with any of the knits that I did with this yarn and I definitely had success because I'm wearing one right now and I love it, so clearly I kept knitting it. So it's inevitable at some point that your sliver is going to break on you as you knit with it. And I want to show you how that happens under the camera and then how easy it is to fix that when it does happen. So you'll see when we look at this up close that you've got these two strands of sliver and they're very, very loose and unspun. And if I just yank on them, they fall apart that quickly. But what you can do is just lay the strands next to each other and then put them in your palm, which is a, like a little bit warm and moist, right? And then you can just rub together and you will rebond those fibers together. If you find that the point that you've rebonded things feels a little bit too thick to you, what you can do is take an extra minute and kind of thin out that join area by making one strand longer and one strand shorter. And I'm just gonna grab another piece so I can show you on the other side here. This is very fuzzy under the camera. And now I'm gonna grab one more piece and cut and kind of break that off. So you can see I don't have four strands that are gonna be rubbed together at the same point. And then I'll put that in my palm and I'll rub it together 
just like that. And now you can see that I've created, I've kind of rubbed those two strands of sliver together and created a whole strand again. So I had to do that many times while I was knitting. It is quite easy for these, um, for this to pull apart as you're working with it. And it just takes a second to do that. And then it is easy to continue knitting with. So that's another tip that will really help you. All right, another place that I find some people get, I just have these little ends as I'm, as I'm showing you things. Another place that sometimes can be a little challenging is just getting going with the casting on. So I'm gonna cast on some stitches onto a needle just to show you tricks that will help you do that more smoothly. So I've got two strands of the sliver over here on a needle and I'm going to do a long tail cast on. You will notice that I am not starting with a slip knot, but I'm just putting my yarn over my needle. And now I'm gonna go do the long tail cast on and you'll see when I get that next stitch on the needle that I am not going to yank. I'm gonna gently with my thumb kind of pull forward so that I tighten up that stitch, but I'm not yanking on it. So you'll find when you do your cast on that you can't cast on quickly. You're gonna to need to be really slow and deliberate, which is really methodical and fun, I find. But if you're used to kind of yanking down on your stitches as you go to cast on, it's your um, sliver is going to break right away and you will get frustrated. If you wanna do a um, German twisted cast on, it's the exact same thing, but you'll just want to make sure that you're really gentle when you're pulling with that front yarn right there so that you're not yanking down on it and separating the fibers from each other. Just one more because I love casting on so much. Stay really gentle. So that's the trick for casting on. This is like the gentle video about being gentle with your knitting. So next up, the thing that I wanna talk about is needles. You're going to find with this yarn that you'll want to work with needles that aren't too short. So you'll probably want to knit with needles that are either wood or bamboo, something that is not going to split the sliver as you are working on your project. You will see here that I'm working on wood needles and I'm just staying really gentle. I have the yarn kind of hanging loose over my finger. I'm not pulling on anything. And I end up making this incredibly light and frothy fabric that's an absolute joy. It's really fun to work with something new in your hands when you're so used to working to a fiber that feels a particular way. So finally, an important thing to talk about is gauge. You will notice when you go to work your gauge for any project with this yarn that your project seems much smaller than you want your finished project to be. When you work your gauge swatch before you block it, it is going to be much, much tighter. And then after you block it, it's going to loosen up and bloom. So for any project that you do with this yarn, it's very important that you work a gauge swatch. And it's kind of fun, like in my patterns, I'll give you the gauge swatch unblocked the measurements and blocked to give you an idea of how dramatically the gauge changes from being unblocked to being blocked. So don't skip that step with this yarn. I find it to be very important. All right. I know I said finally, but there is one other thing that I think is helpful. If you're working a project where you need to weave in ends at the end, if you just go to take the sliver as is and put it onto a tapestry needle, it's going to break as you go to pull those ends through your work to weave them in. So what I would do is just take your palms and kind of rub the slivers together really, really well kind of spinning them into a firmer yarn and then take that and put that onto your tapestry needle and weave it in and it won't break as you go to pull the needle through. And that's a pretty important step. I also find that I like to weave in my ends as I go with this yarn, like at the beginning and end, instead of waiting because it will start to degrade over time if you leave those ends to weave in till the very end. 
All right, I will give you links to everything that I've talked about below as I have patterns that I design in this yarn. I'll have some of it in my Etsy shop if you're interested in purchasing it in any colors. I know that I'm very intrigued about knitting a winter sweater in this yarn, so I think you can expect to see a sweater coming down the pike at some point. I know I'm constantly like, I really love knitting, so I'm constantly like, I'm gonna knit this and I'm gonna knit that and some things see the light of day and some things just get gauge swatched and then I get distracted and move on to the next thing. So we'll see about that. But I thank you so much for watching. Please ask any questions in the comments below. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, sign up for my newsletter. I am happy to learn and knit with you. Thanks so much.